Hi, friends. Host Derek here, host Talking with Fence People. I'm back, and this time you can hear me. This is take two of a of a live stream that began in a fiasco of a quagmire, whereby no sound was coming out of my my mouth, apparently, from the perspective of those uh, uh, watching the channel, anyway. Let me segue from there. Hi, Senjin. Let me segue from there into the important topic of extroverted sensing and how it's not force or power, but that there's a good reason why people think it is. So it's like, yes, it's true that ESTPs, for example, tend to be a little, little bit, and that's not a character of SE in and of itself. It's a quality of SETI, third slot FE, polar FI, the whole package, you know. The, the most important thing to note is that the reason why people all think that Amber Drasher sh showing up with thunder. I've got some, some very sad news for you at the moment, Amber Drasher. I don't have any weed. I have to go to the weed store a little bit later, and uh, so I can't transubstantiate you any bone reps right now. But what I can do is continue informing you about the wonders of extrovert sensing and how it's misconceived all the time. I can hear you now, yes. Um, so uh, the thing is, intuitives come up with all the typology stuff, right? Like most of the typology stuff is come up with by the INFJs, the NTPs, whatever. And so, uh, it's going to naturally seem, especially to those with NE in the front of the stack, that SE is forceful or power related or um, compulsion compulsion related or something. It's absolutely not though, because the reason is it it seems that way to intuitives because if an intuitive is extrovertedly intuiting, then they're still talking about possibility. And so when SE comes in and says, "Let's quit all this empty talk and do shit." then, um, you know, and the intuitive will feel as though they've been forced or pressured or pushed into action before they were ready. And so it's going to feel like forcefulness or, or, or power in some regard to extroverted intuitors, especially. Um, and of course, who's responsible for most of the socionics work, the, ID, the original ideation and the secondary and everything, ANTPs. So, ENTPs are letting their cognitive function bias come through and they're calling SE power or force, not recognizing that it's the same the same dynamic the other direction for somebody who's trying to get shit done, being dragged down into the, the slow oozing muck of extroverted intuition where nothing actually happens, we just talk about shit forever, is is just as constraining or at just as, as as much a form of compulsion to them as their SE is to us. So it's it's important to remember, I think, that when we're talking about a function and we're talking about what correlates with that function or something, that if it, it's not a slot neutral, then it's probably not specific to that function. And there's not a lot of totally slot neutral things we can say about a function. Well, we can say some things. SC is about pulling trigger, opportunism. It's about following through on shit already decided. It's about engagement with physical objects out in the world, like sports and stuff. Um, it's, it's about sex, but it's not about necessarily force or power. Um, and that's how it... I got in this little dispute about this question with Susie the other night because she was talking about her SE polar and saying that being SE polar means that she's not interested in forcing people or, or being, you know, implementing power upon them in some way that's compuls compulsion based. And my response to that was, of course, well, that's not really SE polar per se. Like, if you're an ISFP, you probably also don't want to um, 
use force or compel people to do things they don't want to do. What about relations to items and objects? Well, the thing is, in the external world, there are various objects in the field that you have to interact with. Some of them you perceive as part of yourself. So for objects that are part of yourself, your stuff, that's an SI matter. For objects that are not part of your stuff, that's an SE matter. And the reason is, for objects that are part of my stuff, I'm basically keeping track of where my stuff is with my SI. Um, regard, regarding items and objects in the world, you can think of TE as the manner of attention that determines the specific logic of any given object or item or system that's static, like uh, like a protocols of an organization or something. Um, it's not really static, but what I mean by that is the TE is a way of saying, I want to interface with the logic of these distinct objects in either metaphysical or physical space and uh, and deal with them through a solvency angle. That is to say, you use these various logics of the world as a means to accomplish something, either attain a goal or solve a problem. It's not that absurd to think that the real-time mastery of the body is linked to ethnological aggressivity, stuff like body language, intimidation, seduction, mammalian brain stuff. Hmm. I don't I don't know what eth etho ethnological ethological aggressivity is that I don't know what that means exactly. Stuff like body language intimidation, seduction, one million brain stuff. Um so you're saying it might not be cognitive function related? Stuff like pulling the trigger and and body language and intimidation and stuff like that. I mean, I think the the intimidation factor is one that's going to go along with FE third slot combined with SE. Some people say I'm intimidating, but I don't I don't feel intimidating at all. Um, I'm not trying to be intimidating, that's for sure. And uh, social mammals, behavior, and power dynamics. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, certainly... To that extent, but see, the thing is, I think the attentional manners are half about that, you know? Half of the attentional manners are about being social creatures, and half of the attentional manners are about being individual creatures. Like, uh, you know, NI, NE, FE, and TI are all about communication in some way or another. They're about the those things that are communicable in the world, and they relate to the social aspect of being a human being. Whereas T, E, F, I, S, C, and S, I are all components that you think are, you, you, you generally think are implicit to any kind of living creature's being, right? Um, if you're a, a squirrel, let's say, you got to remember where you keep your nuts to some extent. You got to go out and get nuts. That's S, E. You got to want nuts. <laughs> that's F, I. And you got to, you got to know how to hide them and shit like that, you know? And that's T.E. Any animal, you got to have those four, at least, it seems like. The other four are all about communication, really. And so, um, because humans are both social creatures and, and like most creatures, uh, like any creature, really, they also have their own self-interest as a, you know, when, when the sharks come... The fish still may stay in the school, but it's not because of altruism per se, you know? Um, SE is one of the most diverse functions, close to FI in that regard. Right, because it's rooted in in a timing thing um, with NI. It, it, timing, NI is timing, and SE is, is the thing that, that it, NI talks to, you know, now do it. Um, so, I mean, the, the thing is, SE can absolutely be Im implemented as a form of power or force. That's the truth. Like, if I, if I kick the ant hill and make the ants scurry around, I've imposed some sort of force or power upon them. And it's one of the qualities of 
SE that can be very impactful to people that don't necessarily understand right away, which is if you're not an SE DOM, SE DOMs know intuitively how a given, sometimes what's necessary is to take some sort of action. And when action is required, and it doesn't really matter exactly which action. So an SE DOM is going to be the master of that reality. Because most people are not SE DOMs, and most people are a little bit more cautious, deliberative, knowing, interfacing, or whatever else than that. Or even if they are action types like me or an ENFP, well, it's ideational, so it's less impactful. But with an SE DOM, like an ESFP or an ESTP, uh, they get the idea that that sometimes the determinant factor is simply to act as opposed to not act. And they get all the subtleties of that. So in other words, they don't just use SE as a hammer. A ISTP might go like, uh, the deciding factor is, is almost always to act and when to act, and that's what matters. But an SE DOM is going to have a more subtle understanding of it. Just as an NE DOM is going to have a more subtle understanding of, an N, of NE than an NE tool user. And ultimately, that subtle understanding includes getting, getting how that impactfulness of simply taking some kind of action can coordinate to create the impacts they want in the world overall. So it's kind of... Uh, it's very reasonable to see what people would think is about power or or force, but it's not inherently so. Um, to me, SE is not power, but exert, but about exerting energy. And as SE domes, we grow in life, we become better and better in dosing it. I mean, that's a good way to put it, exerting energy. Uh, and, and the thing is, it's like right now, I'm not really... And there may be some sort of energy exertion that's implicit to SE that's not really to extra intuition, because I don't... I don't feel like I'm really exerting much energy right now at all. And, um, but I do get a, the equivalent thing, which is when it's meaningful to add ideas and when it's not, I have a, I have pretty good discretion with my extroverted intuition. I know when it's going to be counterproductive to ideate further in a given, within the scope of a given event or conversation. So, um, there's that kind of same equivalency there, you know, uh, twirl on them haters. Twirl on them, huh? So what's the best description regarding SE? I just came in. Well, the best description of it is, I mean, it doesn't, it, it kind of resists being narrowed down. It's just, it's the, it's the impact of action, ultimately. That's the matter of attention for SE. And one thing that FE, SE does that I, I recognize in myself periodically when I exer, exercise SE and in my eighth slot function, that's fairly often, is it says, just get this shit down and you don't have to worry about it later. That's one of the SE's favorite things. Just get this shit down and out of the way and let's deal with it later. Well, Johnny Two Guns, here's the thing. Power and force do indeed come easily to an SE DOM, if they're an ESTP especially, and they're directing their impactful action against intuitives. However, the problem is, if you're an ESTP, Johnny Two Guns, I don't know if you are, um, then what you'll experience is the, the degradation of your action into a slog of ideation when you come across an NE DOM who's saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we take any action, we need to resolve this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And this you're going to feel forced or put upon to some extent by the NE DOM in that capacity. There's an inherent battle going on between NE and SC in that regard. NE TI wants to deliberate infinitely. SC TI wants to uh, deliberate just until it's resolved in an act, you know, and whether or not the TI calculation of what's in front of them is enough TI calculation for the whole problem depends on how much and how well they incorporate their A slot NE into the equation. If they have anticipated all the possibilities and parsed it out and come to a firm conclusion that's logically sound, then they should act, and then they do. But that doesn't stop being peace from going, whoa, 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 you didn't come up with all the possibilities. You only came up with some of them. And here's some other possibilities. You need to talk about it a lot more. Now, if I'm the boss, you're going to find me very forceful.
because I'm constraining your SE all the time and I'm preventing you from doing the only thing that really matters, which is taking action to create impact. But on the other hand, if you're the boss, then I'm going to feel constrained all the time. So this is why I'm saying it's not about power and force. Um, extroverted intuition can be just as uh, as impactful upon somebody as extroverted sensing can. It just has to be upon the right kind of person. So what I'm saying is the power and force thing is a perspective issue. It's not implicit to the function. Hi, uh, Hayden, Hayden Cappadona. I have been well. Hope that wasn't too scary for you over your nine FP. Uh, I managed to get through it. Yeah, any ego can easily annoy SE valuers, whereas SE valuers want to get it done rather than discuss or debate ideate endlessly on the situation. Right. So both both sides are going to see the other as a barrier to their nature to some extent. And such such barriers tend to be presented in terms of they're too forceful. They're compelling things upon us. Compelling action when we're not ready. That's too forceful. While you're compelling debate when it's not productive, that's too forceful too. <laughs> Um, Malandrix. Uh, hey, Eric, I've been, I'm done with exams. You've been very productive recently, it seems. You think so? I don't feel productive. I, I feel like I've not been very productive lately. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of treading water at the moment. Like, I'm, well, I'm working on the house. I've been pretty productive about the house. I got to work on the pond a little bit more today. I, I finished making this wagon this morning, which I needed to to go pull in the bag of cement and bag of sand that I want to pull in. And uh, so, I don't know. It's like, I guess I feel productive or not according to how much I feel like the Adderall is, is working on me. Right. Melandrix is right. You've been creating TI stuff rather than TE stuff. I've been doing the easy shit. I've been I've been hanging out in my wheelhouse. I've been hanging out where it's fun and making some fun videos and not making type police videos, not making tournament videos. A lot of videos I can make that are take a little bit more effort and require me to be thusly motivated in some to some extent. So I could probably use a sleepy week. I've been I've been trying to catch up on sleep despite being still on. Adderall, but it's hard. Uh, I took a couple hour nap yesterday and then I got about seven hours sleep last night, but I really need like nine, nine a night. You know, I need nine hours of sleep a night, maybe 10, depending. If I want to be fully rested and it's almost impossible to get that kind of sleep when you're, when you're rolling on Addy, you know? So even if I'm trying to very hard, I'm glad you're back on the weed. That's always healthy. Good for your lungs, good for your heart, good for your brain, good for your farts. Beta quality, quadrant value of hierarchy surely is built on a distribution of power. Where does this emphasis come from? Well, it comes from S-E-T-I-F-E. -E. So it's like an N-I. N-I sees, N-I-F-E sees social systems as what they are, which is hierarchies. And it doesn't, it doesn't make a just world fallacy that assumes that just because you know, we might favor or value more egalitarian perspective that that's how it is. It, it's like because it's NI mixed with TI and FE, they're going to see social systems as as hierarchies. They're not going to resent being in a hierarchy. They're going to try to dominate that hierarchy. And in that regard also, um, or fit into it, depending on which type they are. I'm talking about ESPs are probably going to try to dominate that hierarchy, but you know, like INFJs may may also move up fast enough, but it will be through more subtle means. ENFJs, I guess, will try to dominate it, uh, but ISTPs less so. Um, definitely, the beta quadrant values have a factor in why it's perceived as power. You don't hear the same sort of claim being made about SFPs, though, and... Uh, and that quadra, you know, INTJs, ENTJs, well, ENTJs you might hear. Yeah, there's not so much that we value hierarchy. We acknowledge them and we want them to be clear and explicit. You accept reality as it is, basically. You accept an external reality as it is. As an SI user, I have my experience and that's what I know 
through most of all. And my experience is I don't want to be in a hierarchy. And that's all there is to it. I don't like that. And that's bullshit. And everyone's the same. You know, <laughs> it's in I ignoring. But Eric, there's a truth that seems to be running afoul of what you're saying. Yeah, but that's not the story I'm telling you guys. See, that's not the story I'm telling. So therefore, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. <laughs> Uh, you see what I'm saying there? Um, a T equals empirics power, reliability and application utility, leader. TI equals analytic power, logic, systems, mechanics, true scientist. SI equals control power, discipline and homeostasis, experience, garden. FI equals feeling power, mediator and morals, evaluation. I wouldn't agree with artists and necessarily with FI. I think that's more of an N thing than an F thing. Um, FE ethic power, adaptation and culture, people dynamics consultant. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with most of that. I think that seems about right to me. Is Andy struggles with the hierarchy of your own culture? Is it because uh, Mexicans think women should should stay home or something like that is that what you mean that's bullshit you'll be like hey i got one of these for you it's a little taquito i got right here all right and i got one of these for you too another little taquito i got right here and you dip those in some guacamole and you eat those motherfuckers i'm out zandy out like that Okay, but Johnny Two Guns, to want to change reality is, in some part, to accept it as it is first, right? To recognize what it is, to acknowledge what it is, and then move to change it. For an any dom, reality is whatever I say it is. And it's, uh, if what I get is shocked and dismayed when it doesn't conform with my, with my words, you know, I'm ignoring how it is very diligently. And if it it is so insistent on being how it is to the exclusion of my words, then I'm quite annoyed with it. You know? Where I'm from, cigarettes are called tabs. Hmm. I call them cigarettes, cigarillos, smokes, rillos, rills, puffers, <laughs> la fumar. For any dumb reality is the playground for them to play around it. Right. And, you know, that can bite us in the ass because a lot of times we're just assuming shit's going to go fine and we're not accounting for shit that we don't want to account for, especially if you're a type 7 like me. I'm avoidant of anything that causes me fear. So I've always been, like, with deadlines and shit like that. I just go, ah, avoid, 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 avoid. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, you know. INFJ doesn't live in reality. They live in a fantasy within their own minds. No, they live in a, a reality knowing box that is reluctantly but effectively linked to the self through eighth slot SI. Um, what they don't, uh, the, the extent that they, they're in a fog, it's a fog of, it's a fog of efficacy. Because their TE polar, their FE provides them all the efficacy that they need, but they want legitimacy, which seems to potentially run afoul of efficacy, and additionally, which would seem to make their polar even worse. And then they're kind of confused by that, I think. Um, because, you know, they want to be respected and acknowledged for, for who they are for legitimate reasons, not just for their tool function. And it's similar, it's similar for me. You know, I I want to be, I want FE juice, but I want it for not just TI shit. In fact, I find that the most boring of all FE juice. When people go like, well, that's logically correct. <laughs> okay. I don't know. It, it seems like, it seems like the, 
the minimum acceptable for me. As everybody does with their tool function, you know, you expect yourself to perform well with your tool function. You don't feel a lot of satisfaction when you do because it's the, the hammer you use. Everything's a nail that hits with TI for me. Everything's a nail that hits with FE for an INFJ. Everything's a nail that hits with uh, TI for an ESTP, you know. INFJs live in the harsh reality through the lenses of optimism. Hmm. I don't think INFJs are particularly optimistic, frankly. I think ENTPs are optimistic. It's a lot easier to be optimistic when you're ignoring reality all the time. <laughs> you know, if, if, a, if a story I'm telling is pleasant and I'm believing it at the moment, in other words, reality is not imposing the falsehood of my story upon me, then I'm perfectly happy, you know. Uh, how is six slot used with polar? Well, six slot is demonstrative. So it's not used with the polar as much as it normally would be. Like, okay, so I my six, seven goes TEFI. Those things go together, right? FI tells you what you're supposed to TE on. Except that's not how it really works for me. What do I TE on? Well, Kimberly basically tells me what to TE on. And she has all these problems she brings to me, and I try to solve her problems. I don't really... I don't like TE particularly applied to myself because that means I'm constrained by some sort of goal or frame of solvency that I don't want to be constrained by. I'm trying to have fun here. And uh, and so in that regard, my, my seven slots almost entirely detached from my six slot. And the TE is therefore demonstrative. I'm telling other people how to do shit because, well, I wouldn't be applying it to myself because its source would be FI. It's a really good question, and it makes me realize the link in a way that I hadn't prior. It's um, it's because my blind spot is FI. My TE can only be provided as something that I demonstrate to other people. I don't actually apply it to my own life. And so, if you're like an INTP or something, you got NI in the sixth slot. Well, NI is just something you demonstrate to other people. You don't actually know the truth, so you can act upon it. That would require you to have something other than polar SE. You know, so that's a good question, a really quite a revelatory question. Are there different kinds of realities? Um, well, yeah, I mean, look, a reality is basically an a conscious agent's experience of reality and the composite of artifacts left behind as a consequence. So, uh there's there's a finite number of kinds of realities, I would say, uh, and and the the types represent kinds of realities. So my kind of reality is everything, something I think ideas about, some random shit or whatever. I just come up with random associations, links to my SI, um, that then I parse it out logically to make sure it'll pass muster when I communicate it to other people, and then I communicate and hope they affirm me because I don't know who I am really internally with authenticity. That's the kind of reality the creature I am. So really, attentional manners comprise the different configurations of reality that are possible. You might say that any grown-ups from other things contribute to that as well, but I think that would be a mistake. I think that um, those things are particularist, largely, that they, they become that they're nurture based. What you perceive, what others perceive, and what is. Well, that's the, the issue is the what is part, right? The problem with that lit S is when you say what you perceive and what others perceive, it, and you say what is, it implies that the what is is not perceived by anybody, that exists independently of perception. That's not the case. There's never a situation where there's a reality that exists independently of perception. There's nothing unobserved. So to the extent that the reality has a, a communicable truth to it, it has that communicable truth to it because people are able to communicate that truth about it and not because it is what it is. To understand that in general, you got to have kind of a, a, uh, a model of understanding truth. I, I have a three-pronged model of understanding truth. One is... The truth bearer, truth carrier model. That's what you're talking about, where reality bears the truth and language carries the truth. But in reality, it would be more like this. Reality determines the slope of the communication carried. That is to say, if I hold this up and say it's a duck, 
it's got a much steeper rhetorical slope than if I hold this up and say it's a lighter because the latter is true and the former is false. But what that really means is if I want to argue this is a duck, I'm going to have to go some creative way around. Well, this is actually a duck brand lighter. Okay, well, then it's a duck, I guess, you know. Um, but the point is that uh, that reality sets the terms by which statements about reality attain a certain rhetorical slope, either easy to argue or hard to argue. Hi, Becky. Nice to see you. Um, I have... SE is not power of forcefulness. I think the idea I have is SE has a power sensing element. Well, I suspect that SE, FE, I think Beta Quadra does. They certainly have a, a importance sensing element. And, you know, it's one of those things that uh, I think ENTPs can defy a bit. It's like, because in general, I would say I come off as when people first meet me, um, harmless, almost defenseless, but I'm not actually defenseless. I am, I am pretty harmless, but I'm not very defenseless. Uh, off topic, but I have an ENTP close mate and housemate, and there are times I can see when it takes me a long time to figure out what I'm trying to say that I can see it hurting him. <laughs> As I, yeah, when people take a long time to get shit to get shit out, it's physically painful. <laughs> I mean, I swear to God, it's like, oh, will you spit it the fuck out, please? Um. <laughs> um, you yeah, T I T E and F I are the biggest factors. They actually get on incredibly well. Top what you need to do is basically remind them to chill the fuck out. That's that's all you gotta do. Just say, dude, chill the fuck out. Take a deep breath. Listen, this is not gonna take up too much of your time. I want to take my time saying this. It's important to me. You don't know what that means because you got polar F I. Um, I'm watching this from a hospital bed, coach. <laughs> That's good to hear, chief. <laughs> I really remember from the past again and again. Is it SI? Yeah, that's SI. But it's not necessarily top of the stack. I've gone through that experience before, too. I got a four stack. What is SE then? Well, SE is engagement with the external world through your senses in its most basic form, but it's linked to NI because it's about, it's the thing that that NI triggers. NI triggers it and says, okay, go, do, whatever. Um, so it's it's the hardest to describe metaphysically because it's, it's not metaphysical. It's about converting metaphysicality into physicality. SE versus SI in storytelling? SI is has a definite role in storytelling. SE really doesn't have any role in it, but if you're an SE Dom, you'll have SI ignoring fifth slot, which is pretty strong, and you'll end up being a, a decent storyteller of events that have happened to you. Real storytelling occurs with NE above SI, because then you're, you've got, like if you're a dominant NE user, I have this thing, can anyone going on between any SI and NI in the fifth slot. So it's like something will be prompt me to draw an association from my ad memory, sometimes random. If I'm trying to be creative, for example, I'll, I'll just find random shit that will link in ways that make no sense necessarily. And then I'll find a third triangulate spot with NI that says, well, here's the universal thing that links these things together. And so because I'm doing that all the time, um, I forgot what I was responding to. Uh, so because I'm doing that all the time, I'm I can be a very effective storyteller. I can be uh, I can make up a brand new story right now, or I could tell a story from my life and tell it effectively. Because it's it, and it's not just the SI, and it's not just it. It's where everything is. Any Dom SI four Ni five in particular with Fe third means I'm going to try to tell it in a way that's. Uh, makes me likable, you know, that people will enjoy the story and give me applause or praise afterwards or something. You said any has a lot to do with ideation. Does it translate to NI? Well, Richard Graham, Gamer 71, well, sport, let me tell you. Uh, NI is, 
it, look, if you get an NI DOM, it's the same way as with an NE DOM, except it's the other way around. They've got their NI mixing with their NE all the time, just like I got NI mixing with my NE all the time. The difference is they don't have that fourth slot knowing function, SI. That's a slot for them. And so their storytelling, their SI past, is always going to serve singular universal truth rather than the other way around. Um, which means INFJs can be great storytellers as well, but they'll probably, um, they'll probably begin telling the story with already having a clear overview of the whole thing. Whereas I would never start a story like that. I don't have any clear overview of where, where it goes, right? Until I get there. And so I've written a novel, but I didn't know what was going to happen in the novel. I've written a couple of novels, actually, or a novella and a novel. I didn't know what was going to happen until I worked it all out, until I wrote it and cut a bunch of shit. It's, it's a brute force way of getting where N.I. would get. Now, I think that INFJ, like J.K. Rowling, she's probably, you know, that's an example of, of why an INFJ potentially can be the most effective writers of all, even though they're not naturally as... They, they don't begin life, I think, with as much of a of an advantage in terms of natural aptitude for language than uh, ENTPs do, but they can certainly acquire it. And regardless, they've got this link into the universal that will make the ship more resonant across the board than ENTP ship will ever be in general. So it gives them an advantage. If you're talking about fiction, you know, if you're talking about... Uh, other kinds of writing, not necessarily. So did you read my novels? Well, only one of them is available to be to be read, actually, and that's Gospel of the Pantheon. Um, I think so. I think it's good. I I would have a started a series where I was reading it out loud and then I I got sidetracked by something else halfway through it and it's halfway read out loud. I'm gonna finish reading it out loud though. Um, I got a little discouraged as well by the lack of the lack of views, lack of feedback, stuff like that. It was a little bit discouraging because it's hard to get somebody to listen to part of your novel. And even if they start listening to it, it better be damn fucking good or else people are not going to stay with it through the whole thing, you know? And yeah, I think, I think it's pretty damn good, but uh, it may not be, it's not for everybody, I guess. I don't know. Um, when you write, Eric, do you scrap a lot of your work? Yeah. Oh yeah. I scrap shit all the time. I must have written a thousand pages to get that 325 page book, you know, or how many pages it is. Um, I had to cut all kinds of shit out, you know, it's hard. That's the hard thing for an any Dom is everything's harder when you're trying to make it concise, precise, just right. It's that's when the genuine brute force ish quality of any comes through where everything's trial and error. My NI can't even begin to think about doing something until I see it in front of me, it seems like. You know, it's like I, I don't have whole clear visions about shit. I just don't. I just, I have a, an idea that seems fun, and I just roll with it, and you just see where it goes, you know. Um, the other book that is not available to read is uh, The Megalomaniacs. And the reason it's not available to read is I only have one copy of it. It's, it's, typed onto paper is from when I was like 27 years old. I've read it though. It's pretty good. Uh, it's, it's a short book. It's a novella. It's about this, these scientists who developed this, uh, this serum that they inject into people. Most of the time it kills the people instantly, but when it doesn't, it gives them a superpower. And uh, I won't tell you. And so there's a lot of discussion about, about trying to figure out what it is that, what quality of the person causes them to be receptive to it or not, you know? Trying to figure out like, well, how do we know, can we check for some sort of protein or something that like, well, if you have this protein, you get a superpower, but if you don't, you die. Um, anyway, I won't, I won't reveal the... Something like only 1% of people finish a novel after starting one. Finish writing a novel after starting one or reading a novel after starting one? Oh, I apparently she didn't 
didn't want me to publish it. I when we were talking after the typing. I thought it was pretty clear that she was expecting it to be published, and I guess I didn't confirm it uh, absolutely. But um, yeah, she emailed me saying she, she didn't give me permission to put it up. So I, well, I'll take it down. I'm sorry. And I was told I worry about what other people feel because I'm nice and someone caring for him, an ENTJ, not an INTJ, because of FE7 slot. What do you think about that, host Derek? I think that's ridiculous. Worry about what other people feel is an FI thing. Worry about what other people think is an FE thing. Is Dr. House an ENTP? I guess so. I've never seen that show. Tolstoy did upwards of seven drafts for every chapter. Writing is a lot more work than people think. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Um, I don't write long. I don't write long shit anymore. So, uh, I mean, I, I'd like to again. I I would. Uh, I have I have a couple of books in mind, but mostly I don't have a fiction novel in mind anymore. Um, the thing about fiction is, I think I lack a quality that's necessary to write very popular fiction, and it must have something to do with um, being emotionally resonant. I maybe I could do it now. Maybe I could pull it off now. I don't know. I, I recognize the need for that quality in my music more clearly, I guess, than I've ever really thought about it in my writing before. But, um, yeah, I'm glad I wrote those books. I've also written a couple. Yeah, I, oh, I sent you an email. I didn't send you an email. I, I, I went to the Hangout chat thing, Bruce Wayne. That's where I got a message from you on that hangout chat thing. And then I went there and I responded on, on that thing. But I'll go back over there in a little while. I mean, this is probably going to be an hour long, uh, hour long live stream. I don't know if she was unhappy about being an ISJ or not. I, uh, I've never, never, I didn't, she didn't indicate that one way or the other. Naomi M says, which book? <sighs> uh, Dostoevsky and I can't pronounce that. Um, PT and I is all about the journey. She's probably just shy. Yeah, she's probably just shy. I would guess so as well. I believe INFPs are the best storytellers. Well, Fate Wind, I have to take exception with that. I mean, they can be good storytellers, but um, the problem is. They're counter-valuing NI. They can demonstrate it, I guess, communicatively. They'd be able to demonstrate it. Um, yeah. ESFPs, I, I mean, I'd be tempted to sometimes say they're compulsive liars, but they're not necessarily. It just seems that they don't have a lot of respect for what TI deems is the truth. Uh, Sol Yates Nissen. Sol Yates Nissen. Sol Ye Nissen. That's hard to say. Sol Sol Ye Nissen. <laughs> I can see the brewing tension of conflict relation on that video. Well, professional victim, you did indicate that she was an ISFP, but even if you were right, even if it turns out that you're right about that, which I don't think it is, the fact that you've concluded that based on the justifications you have indicates that. Even if you were right about this, it wouldn't be representative of a validation of your judgment because you're not asked, you're not making determinations of people's types on the right things. Um, we say TI could also be considered truth, and how is it different compared to NI truth? Well, TI truth is conditional truth fundamentally, and that's what everybody seems to forget. Things may be deductively certain, but they're conditionally deductively certain. The, the absolutely true statement is if A, then B, and A, therefore B. But it's all if, right? If it's the case that if A, then B, and it's the case, and if it's the case that A, then it's the case that B. So the thing about truth is it's different from validity. What I just demonstrated is the universality of validity, that you, validity can be universal because it's of the nature of conditionality. Now, in contrast, NI truths are 
are non-reductive. They, they, don't, they don't reduce very well. They take advantage of synergy. They say, well, in this instance, because of, of my NI understanding of things, I can see how this whole will be synergistically greater than the sum of its parts. And as a consequence, it in some sense won't be TI sound because it will rely on things that resist resist collapsing down into definitional parsings. So uh, FE manage, how does FE manage perceptions, Eric? Doesn't the management of perceptions depend upon the person, the one whose perceptions are being controlled functions? Uh, yes, but remember that perception management can be as simple as being cool, being nice, um, being interested in what you have to say, being concerned for your well-being or whatever else, and dis and expressing or displaying those things. So those things are fairly universal. It's like there isn't a type that prefers that people are cruel to them, for example. Well, I, I, normally I'd be nice to you, but since you're an ISFP, I know you love it when I'm cruel. So that means an objective function as opposed to a subjective or personal one is because it deals with those elements of feelings that are universal, that are specific to the group dynamic aspect of human being. That is to say things like hierarchy, things like uh, respect, disrespect, shame, anger, Emotions that link to other people in a communicative way are the specific dominion of FE. Do FE and TI work together to create conditional morality? TI is responsible for parsing out normative calculi if you want to do it in that way. So FI has its own normative calculi, which is basically, I respect the, the legitimacy of individuals so much that I'm going to support anything, any policy that would seem to support those individuals, especially those who are suffering. So they'll be like, well, let's have more socialist bullshit that won't work because we've got to do something because people are poor. That's an FI kind of legitimizing of ethics because it's saying the experience, negative experience itself is bad and must be prevented or whatever. Uh, TI, in contrast, says everything's got to be fair. And so it parses shit out so that what makes the most logical, reasonable sense and which sustains the most scrutiny. And then it says, okay, now how can I present this truth in ways that are accommodating of the fact that other people aren't using TI? So FE is the way that TI users bridge their TI with other people's non-FE TI functions. And you, yeah. Read chat. What you talking about? I'm talking about you, Mikers! Exclamation point. We're saying, when's Micah going to get here? Exclamation point. And why hasn't he been here yet? Exclamation point. Eric, what do you think is the difference between INFP and INFJ in the sense of being able to see through people? In what ways are they similar? They're not really similar. Um, INFJs, they'll recognize your emotions, sure, but they're mostly interested in those emotions that have to do, as I mentioned, with the group. So, if you're just sad and they ask you why are you sad and you go, oh, my puppy died, they'll immediately lose interest at that point. They might still be compassionate and, and comforting and stuff and express concern. But as far as they're actually concerned, they've lost interest in it immediately because that's an FI matter. It doesn't have any communicative impact, really. It's not relevant to perceptions. It's just telling the person, you're just telling the INFJ, you can you can quit worrying about my perceptions today because I'm obsessed with my dead dog. So uh, that, the difference being there that INFJ is at that point that's not a field that INFJ is interested in playing on anymore. Whereas if if the person instead goes, um, Judy disrespected me and I'm really upset. Now that's a field INFJ wants to play on. So that's and those are the different areas where they understand the other person. The FI DOM, INFP, is going to understand that range of expression from dead dog to whatever that causes you to feel sad or happy or, or good or, or whole or in, unwhole or whatever about yourself. 
Whereas the INFJ is going to understand how much the all the various vectors of social engagement are impacting your ontology. So it's a different it's a different kind of um, frame that the that similar sets of data are put through for each type, and it causes them to be quite distinct from one another in their um, in their respective areas of expertise. While it also remains concurrently true that both can see can sort of see through people, but they do they're seeing through they're seeing different things when they, they have different flavors of X-ray, you know. Uh, TE equals logic, TE equals rational, TE equals logics, non, non-communicative logics, and TI equals communicative logic. Communicative logic means if it can be expressed in words and we can parse it out and afford it a, 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 a status of legitimate or true or false or illegitimate or whatever else, then it's subject to TI logic. However, that's not going to do us any good if we're trying to fix a broken coffee pot. If the coffee pot's not working because it, every time we put it in, it starts dripping over onto the side, uh, then you got to figure out the logic of that coffee pot and figure out why it is that it's doing that. Oh, it's because this thing needs to be pushed down more and it pops out. Can I play your guitar? Can I play my guitar for you? Um, I, I think I will do that in about three minutes. I'll play a song. And, um, and I appreciate you asking me a lot. And then I'll probably wrap this up. Um, that's very nice of you. I, I, it's it's always such a pleasant surprise when people ask that because I have spent my most of my adult life just telling myself, Eric, nobody wants to hear you playing these fucking songs, so just shut shut the fuck up, you know? Because it's like I want people. I've always before I had this YouTube channel, I didn't get any attention from anybody. I was always trying to to just shut myself down because I was being too much. You know, I was always being too much, Eric. Too much Eric for everybody. Um, so example, INFJ will recognize the FI concerns in someone, but not value their feelings, like Eric's example of an individual with dead pack. Yeah, that's a good way to sum it up, Johnny. Johnny Two Guns. Um, okay, so I'm gonna smoke the cigarette when I'm done with the cigarette, I'm gonna play a song. Maybe two. And then I will take my mom here. And go work a little bit on the pond, hopefully, is my plan. We'll see if I fall through on that or not. But uh, I've got two ponds in the mix in the backyard. One's higher and one's lower. And I'm trying to make it so that it has a little river between them, okay? <laughs> so that it's like the, the waterfall comes into the top one, and then there's a little river that goes down to the bottom one, and then the pump puts it back up to the waterfall. So... Um, I've got the top one fully functional, but I gotta I have to put some mint down or else my river will just leak into the ground too much, you know. Yeah, um mom's here and mom is unusually calm today. She hasn't really chimed in much and uh she hasn't fallen asleep for a little while. Well maybe she's gone to do something or something. Maybe she has, Mom. Well, maybe you know she the has. Thing. It has fish in it. The top it one has fish already. A lot of us is the fact that these things keep going up, up and up and up, and yet we know. We know that they shouldn't go up. Yeah, no, it's not so much that as we know that those guys all have more stuff than we do. They do? Who are these guys who have more stuff than we do? I wonder. I and even, it was earlier this morning or something, it was either you or somebody were saying, listen, they just did it. Oh. So that we go out afterwards. Mm. That's um, Fe minus the content, right? <sighs> Let's see. What am I going to play here? Okay. I'm going to play. First, I'm going to play my new song called. Um, called. What's it called? Uh, Throwing Shade. But too much noise but Too much noise In the data stream Hmm, I'm having trouble This is a new song so I don't really know how to play it yet 
Oh, it's C sharp minor. That's fine. Okay, now I got it. Too much noise in the day to stream. I'm also going to turn on these mics a little bit. Because I'm peeking left and right. Too much noise in the day to stream. Tomorrow, there'd be time for yesterday. But the sort of thing that one can borrow, no one will fail to win that day. Uncertainties implicit, just like an unexpected visit from a bunch of men. That, that was poorly executed. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, like I said, it's a new song, so I'm not very good. Yeah, Hopefully, destruction of the whole damn world, which I'm pretty good at. We need to see. We need to know. We need to pin happenings down by a means to judge a logic to life we device of the unlike it, but which we'll rarely judge. People everywhere gather up enemies, outrage at how they miss a sign, how do they set their priorities, these foreign facts, femininities, into when are they can misery, follow necessarily from their tabbing ways. In something cards in the misery, with a tuck with just made a lesson. We all partition the records and call it destruction of the whole damn world. Judy shares our limits. Hoping Judy will do. There is a for four minutes. Just can't share things like they do. She always thought that she should have got to when she had the chance to buy. She soon forgot the fact should have not called, though she ever called that. People everywhere gather up enemies, outraged at how they miss a sign. How do they set their priorities? These fall in backstabbing and disease. It's too win, I take in misery, follow necessarily from the savage ways. Insulting, causing a desiree. We're stuck in such petty larceny. We all partition the record and call it destruction of the whole damn world. Oh! Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, the version you posted a while ago, I listened to it before you deleted it, was good. Is that the oh, I, I re uploaded it? I uploaded it and deleted it because I had attached the wrong wave file to it. I, I had an earlier mix 
without bass in it. And I accidentally put that file in. So then I deleted it and re-uploaded it with the bass mixed properly into it. So it's there, that song. Um, the first one, uh, Throwing Shade. Thank you for listening to it. I appreciate it, Peter Dentist. And thank you all for being here. And don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.